Welcome back, Dr. Guinan here, talking about um, percutaneous biopsy this time. So biopsy is probably not the most exhilarating thing in interventional radiology and probably something that students aren't dying to see if they're really interested in the world of IR, but definitely one of the most common things that we do in IR and something that um, you know, is a backbone of, of the specialty. So something we need to be comfortable with and, and definitely something we need to know um, something about. So basically the most important thing when we're thinking about percutaneous biopsy is, uh, is it something that we should biopsy and how can we safely do it? So, you know, Obviously, looking at pre-procedural imaging is going to be very important for that. Um, so as I said, we need to evaluate the feasibility of what they're asking, what the referring provider is asking us to get a piece of. Uh, the questions I always ask myself is, number one, is there a safe window for percutaneous biopsy? So can I even get a needle to it, or am I going to have to go through colon or bowel or large vessels to get to it? Because uh, obviously then the risk would outweigh the reward. And then even if I think I can get to it, is there a safer way of sampling the tissue, or is there a way we can make a diagnosis without even putting a patient through this you know, minimally invasive, but still invasive um, procedure. And then, you know, depending on whatever um, thing the referring provider is asking me to biopsy, uh, there may be some other questions or considerations that we make, need to make. So one of the most common percutaneous biopsies we get asked to do is a percutaneous lung mass or lung nodule biopsy. And there's some uh, extra things we need to ask ourselves when we're thinking about doing lung biopsies. Um, two of the biggest risks for lung biopsies, one would be creating a pneumothorax, because obviously going through the lung, there's um, a potential for that lung to leak uh, air outside of the lung parenchyma and in the chest, you know, and worst case scenario, creating a pneumothorax. Um, so how can we minimize those risks? Well, uh, studies have been done, and if we take a more perpendicular uh, approach to puncturing the pleura, so closer to 90 degrees, that is best. Uh, we definitely don't want to cross more pleural surfaces than we need to, so fissures are pleural surfaces, so we'd rather not cross fissures if absolutely possible. <coughs> and then we would rather biopsy something along the periphery of the lung versus the central aspect of the lung, because the more lung you poke through, the more chance of there being a persistent leak. Makes sense. And then the other thing we think about when we're poking lungs is the risk of causing bleeding, just like anything else. So we can minimize our risk of hemorrhage, again, by trying to do more peripheral lesions when able. And I would argue if there's something more central, maybe we should consider doing a bronchoscopy and uh, biopsy that way. Um, so <clears throat> when we're thinking about doing biopsies, there are basically two um, approaches. One is a core needle biopsy, which almost always uses a coaxial technique. So coaxial technique is uh, utilizing a guiding or coaxial needle. Here I have a picture of the type that we use, uh, Temno. So this is the coaxial needle. It's uh, what will actually um, place into the patient under image guidance. Um, and then we'll get this to the edge of the lesion and then take this inner stylet out and then be able to put in this uh, biopsy device through it and actually take our samples. Uh, it's really nice because we only have to make that cross the path to get to the target once and then we can take this in and out a bunch of times to get different samples, uh, but effectively you've only poked that patient once and gone, you know, avoided whatever structures you need to on the way. <coughs> so a way to minimize risk and maximize um, tissue. And then sometimes we don't want a core needle biopsy or 
core biopsy would be more dangerous. So in those cases, we use a fine needle aspiration. Um, that's by using a very small gauge needle, like a 21 to 25 gauge needle, and making multiple passes and taking small cell blocks and sending them off for sample. We do this almost always for thyroid nodules. Um, but then small lung nodules or nodules in anatomically challenging places like up against vessels that we're worried about going through or along uh, the diaphragm, things even within the lung, if it's too small, sometimes tuning FNA can <clears throat> give us an opportunity to make the diagnosis without having a uh, complication. So after all that, let's get to the cases. So here I was asked to do a liver biopsy and we had lots of choices. So this is a good one to think about, you know, how we're going to get this answer. So would we go through here? Well, obviously not. I haven't put it on lung windows, but this big black block is a costophrenic uh, recess of the lung. And we definitely don't want to cross through that and potentially give ourselves a pneumothorax or cause lung damage on the way. So no. All right, what about like that? Well, potentially, but um, it's a little bit of an odd angle. And again, we're pretty close to the diaphragm. If the patient takes a deep breath in while we're putting the needle in, we're putting it at risk. So maybe let's look around. This is kind of in the mid aspect of the liver and we can see probably what's causing our liver lesions. Could we just biopsy this primarily? Um, I could potentially FNA it, although I will say pancreatic lesions are usually not best biopsied by a percutaneous approach. Plus, um, if there's liver lesions, it's probably safer to get a, a piece of those and then, you know, have proof that it's metastatic and the answer of what's in the pancreas at the same time. So we'll keep looking. If they're looking at some implants along the peritoneum here, but I'm more interested in what's on this side. So this is a liver lesion that is not super close to the uh, lateral edge of the liver. So we're going to go through some normal liver before we get to it, which is good. This is about as inferior as you get in the right hepatic lobes. We're away from the lungs. Um, for all of those reasons, I think this is probably our safest approach. And that's, ended, that's uh, what we ended up doing. Uh, this patient did have a little bit of ascites down here, and we don't usually like to cross ascites, uh, but we got away with it in this case, and the patient didn't have any bleeding afterwards. Uh, again, very frequently get asked to do lung biopsies. In this case, we had a peripherally based uh, right lower lobe lung biopsy. Uh, at least on the diagnostic CT, it looks like it's immediately flanked by rib, but I will say that always changes as people breathe. So this is our um, pre-intervention CT, and we do see basically an unchanged nodule in that peripheral aspect of the right lower lobe. You can see these little lines on the skin. This is a grid that we a grid sticker that we place on the patient before we do the scan and it helps us pick out our trajectory and, and make a mark on the skin and know where we're going. And we, uh, under fluoroscopic guidance, guided a small needle into place and got multiple core samples. So this would be the coaxial needle. We can actually see the stylet partially out. You take this part out and put the, the biopsy device in and take multiple samples there. And then here's our post-procedure um, CT. A little bit of hemorrhage around uh, the nodule and then it's a very small pneumothorax. So in these cases, well, in all cases of lung biopsy, we always get a two-hour uh, post-procedure chest x-ray. And that's to look for delayed pneumothorax and people that had no pneumothorax at the time of procedure and those like this patient who had some, we make sure they don't get any bigger, don't need any intervention.
this is our final patient that we're talking about, another lung biopsy. So we have this large left lower lobe pulmonary mass. Um, and we've kind of talked about, you know, thinking about which approaches we can make for percutaneous biopsy. Uh, but sometimes it's not just what approach to take, but you have to think about how to position the patient as well. Um, in the abdomen, sometimes positioning people a certain way will move bowel out of your way or make a lesion easier to see. In the lung, um, we can decrease our risk of pneumothorax by putting the side we're biopsying down. So air will preferentially go to our you know, non-dependent lung. Uh, so, and we have your body weight doing some compression on the lung and two of those things help to kind of decrease the risk of pneumothorax, which is good. Um, and here, you know, I'm just showing our root. Uh, sometimes you can't perfectly work in that single axial slice plane. If you could look back on the prior uh, image, the ribs didn't let us do that. So you kind of have to work in the Z axis as well. So, you know, this needle, we're not seeing the needle tip completely. It's coming towards, uh, through the screen towards you probably. And we'll go one slice up here. And there shows the tip of the needle with our actually biopsy device engaged. So we prove that we took a good sample and then we do our post and it looks beautiful. So again, not the most glamorous portion of IR, but biopsy is something that, you know, all subspecialties or most subspecialties um, need. So we're happy to help them out and do that part.